Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and give it up for Jesus. Come on and give him the best praise you got tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, have mercy, God. You're worthy of our praise. You're so worthy, God. We bless you on tonight. We've entered in with thanksgiving on our hearts and a praise on our lips, God. We tell you thank you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. None like you. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We want to say thank you for coming out on tonight. Amen. We want to welcome our Facebook and our YouTube partners. Thank you so much for joining and tuning in on tonight. Amen. We want to give it up for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. My best, my bestest good friend. The one that stick is closer than a brother. Lord, have mercy. One who died for me and saved me and brought me forth from a miserable place of sin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we now give it up for our bishop, Bishop David Swinson. Amen. For all of our elders and ministers, deacons, sanctuary workers, our mothers, everyone in their respective places. Amen. We bless God for you on tonight. Hallelujah. The youth can be dismissed. We thank God for our youth workers, our youth ministry team. Amen. Thank God for you all. Thank you for your sacrifices. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to get, we're going to dive into this word. Amen. How many of you hungry tonight? I'm talking about hunger for this word. Not hungry for some Captain D's or some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That'll come afterwards. <laughs> but I'm talking about hungry and thirsting after this word. Amen. 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 We are still in our series, The Little Foxes. We are now on lesson three, entitled The Little Fox of Spiritual Apathy. Somebody say spiritual apathy. If you don't know what it is, you're going to find out tonight. If you want to be honest, I think the body of Christ at large is experiencing this little fox. He has come in subtly. He has come in unaware. He has caught many of us off guard. He, oh my God, we're going we to hear about this tonight. But this is the thing that I love about God, that he won't leave us where he found us. Even if we slipped into it unaware, he is sending us a word of warning. Listen, you have gotten off track. You've gotten too far away from me. It's time to come back. Amen. Amen. I know COVID happened. I know everybody want to blame it on COVID. That's fine. COVID had its place. It did what it did. But what did you do after COVID? Did you maintain your relationship with God through COVID? Did you maintain your fire and your desire and your love and your passion for God through COVID? I don't know about nobody else, but yes, I got closer to God in COVID. I had more time to spend with God in COVID. I had, listen, I had more time to study and work and get in my word. I had more time to worship. I didn't call, I didn't think COVID was my time of relaxation. It was not a time of relaxation. It was a sure time of meditation. Listen, and for us to meditate on where we are and what, what is happening in this, in this whole spill of things, right? 
Amen. Why is God allowing this to happen? Anybody ask, why is God allowing it? Because you know nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing. So he had to allow it for something. Amen. What you think? Amen. <clears throat> so again, uh, we're going right back into our study, the little foxes, lesson three, the little fox of spiritual apathy, My Lord. spiritual apathy. I want everybody, if you don't mind, to go over to uh, Second Chronicles, mm -hmm. chapter twenty-five, mm -hmm. verses uh, one and two. Uh, for you all who did get the lesson. Got a little too much space, I think, right here. Uh, may want to turn the, this box down right here. <clears throat> or you can turn it off if you want to. Um, as we started this lesson, uh, it gave us about, it gave us two scriptures at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The very first one was the Songs of Solomon. It was two, uh, chapter 2, verses fifth, or verse 15. It says, take us the little fox, or take us the foxes, mm -hmm. the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Yeah. Okay? And then the next scripture it gave us was Second Chronicles 25, mm -hmm. verse 2. But I'm going to read uh, verse 1 and 2. Amen. Okay? So, it says, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name, the name correctly, but it, Amaziah, Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he became, began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan, Jehoadan, or Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right Lord, have mercy. in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. but not with a pure heart. <laughs> I need y'all to catch it. I need you to catch it. I need you to catch it. Listen to it again. And he did, in verse 2, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a pure heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it one more time for the folk in the back. Right. Read it again. Verse 2. Let me tell you who I'm talking about. So I'm going back to verse 1. Amaziah, king, king, king Amaziah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign. In other words, sit in the king's chair. And he reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem, specifically Judah. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. Verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. but not with a perfect heart. When I, when we first started this, I kept saying to myself, why is they giving me, giving us this script? Because it seems like to me it had nothing to do with the songs of Solomon and the little foxes. But now you see that and Amma, King Amaziah did what which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a heart or, or a perfect heart. Why is that? To be honest with you, I used to hear my aunt, Dr. Swenson, talk about spiritual apathy. 
for many years while we were in their ministry. And I thought I knew what apathy was. But until you get to doing a word study or studying the word of God, it's not until then that you find out that you don't know as much as you think you know. Check this out. You're not seeing as much as you think you are seeing. In other words, you have a number of people that are just, when I sent them the information today, they, and I normally send a title, and the title that I sent to them today was Spiritual Apathy, Going Through the Motion. Going through the motions. And what we find out, and I was really surprised reading, uh, studying wow. Amaziah. And the reason why this lesson has this particular scripture. Because it is basically saying that King Amaziah, he did everything right <laughs> in the sight of God, but his heart wasn't in it. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. His heart, his heart was not in it. And so we can actually look around into the body of Christ today. And, and I ain't got to look in the body of Christ. I can look right here in this church. I can look right here in these 85 chairs that's in here. That there are a number of saints who are just going through the motions. And if I was to diagnose you, I would say that you have spiritual apathy. What does spiritual apathy mean? I can say, uh, I'm going to read it from the, the, uh, from the uh, Webster Dictionary. And it says apathy, meaning a lack of interest. A lack of enthusiasm. Yes, sir. A lack of concern. And what we found out about King Amaziah is that he had uh, action service or eye service, but no heart service. Wow. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Yes, sir. He had eye service, I guess you can say. In other words, it looked like he loved God. It looked like he was on God's team. It looked like, but the bottom line at the end of the day, he did not have a, thing, a heart for the things of God. How many of us are sitting in this church right now actually participating in ministry, but you are spiritual apathetic? Nothing moves you. Not the word, not God, not the spirit, not the mention of the name Jesus. Come here, somebody. Not the, not the worship, not the, pray, the preaching. Come here. Not prayer. We are come to a place where we are spiritual apathetic. We're not moved when people need help. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. We're not moved when, uh, when different things happen. Uh, we don't to a point, we 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 sitting on the fence. Another word for th spiritual apathy is also Revelation chapter three, lukewarm. Yep. Lukewarm. How many of y'all like lukewarm anything? On holiday, none of us like lukewarm anything. We want it either hot or we want it either cold. Sounds like a, a characteristic of the, of the father, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You want, don't want no apathetic lover, no apathetic husband, no apathetic wife. Come here. Y'all, we don't want no apathetic nothing. It's going to be either on or it's going to be off. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the Holy Ghost coming through here. You just don't care about nothing. It don't move you. I'm hanging around the house of God, but I ain't moved by what's going on. I hear the word of God, and I don't let it penetrate my heart. And I hear the word of God, or I'm in this, uh, I'm in the, amongst spiritual 
people who really, really love God, but nothing moves you. You're not trying to grow. You just know it's right to come to church. Y'all didn't hear what I said. It's, you just know it's right to just be here on Sunday, be here on Wednesday. You just know it's right in the sight of God, but my heart ain't in it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. Come through, Pastor, if you want to come. Through. It's almost like a part time love affair. That's what I heard in the spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and you said earlier, we don't want uh, apathetic nothing. We don't right. want to, you know, we, right. we quickly remove ourselves when we are in a relationship that's apathetic. Right with a man or a woman when the desire when there's no desire there's nothing there that's wooing me anymore we can quickly remove look I, I don't have time this ain't it you know but what about your relation our relationship with God what if God is saying look I ain't got time you don't want me I don't want you what if what if God is saying that to us like we will so quickly say in a relationship. God don't want part time. He said you can't serve two masters. You can't be divided. You're going to either want me or you're not. You're going to serve me or you're going to serve the devil. You can't do both. Though we try and attempt to do both. God is saying when are you going to make up your mind? How many times. Last year, we came to service, 104, about 106 times, 108 times, 52 Sundays, 52 Wednesdays, uh, 52 Sundays, 52 Wednesdays, Wednesdays. Uh, we had two services, uh, we had two services, we had two services, Two special services. One was um, was that uh, the anniversary, and the other one was catapult. That's 108. Out of all of those days, out of all the messages you heard, in that amount of time, how many did you apply to your life? How many did you leave out here moved or pricked in your heart to apply this word to my life? To make some changes concerning yourself. Many of us can say, or if you're honest with yourself, in some situations, you were apathetic. In some messages that you heard, or sometimes when you encounter or should have encountered the presence of God in worship, it didn't change you. Because I was here, but my heart wasn't in it. Jesus. See, and this is where you go to spiritual growth as it pertains to spiritual growth, growth because we have to not pick God up on the way to church and put him down when we leave. How many of us do that on a regular basis? How many of us don't grow from the messages that are being ministered? Oh, we don't choose to grow. Because growth is in there, and growth is a choice. You follow what I'm saying? I say this all the time. I don't have to go home. I choose to go home because I want to. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Uh huh? How many of us, how many of us are not choosing to grow? How many of us are not, we just expect God to do something and we refuse to pray about it? 
How many of us expect God just to work it out without me being involved? Oh, y'all didn't hear That's what I'm saying. Huh? How, 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 how many times have we sat here knowing you serving? You serving in ministry. Your title is elder, a minister, a deacon. Come in, somebody, or, or a youth youth worker. But you don't think about any of that until you on your way on Wednesday what? afternoon. Yes, sir. You don't. You're only. You're on. You're on your way on Sunday morning. I can't, I can't hear nobody. It's quiet in here, Jesus. It's quiet in here. It can, can I be honest with you? I even found some apathy even in my life. Oh, oh, oh. See, there's absolutely no way you can study this word and not find you in it. Right. There's no way. Absolutely. I don't absolutely. care what it is. You gonna find yourself somewhere Amen. in here. Amen. Apathy, apathy, right. ap apathy in several different areas yes, in our walk with God. Yes. When check this out, even when you shut up for your bowels of mercy. Yes. Because we become so apathetic. And one of the things, the reason why you become apathetic is because you lack, you lack discernment. Sometimes we lack relationship. Huh? <laughs> we lack encounters with Christ each and every day. We lack encounters with the Holy Spirit each and every day. Somewhere along the way, somebody has lost their fire. They know it's wrong. They know it's right to come to church. <laughs> they know it's right to serve in ministry. But because, but because of becoming apathetic, meaning that your heart has left it. That's why the Bible says we had to do our first works over. Because we could, because routine can become mundane. Y'all, y'all not hear what I'm saying? It can come become mundane and because we seem like we're doing the same thing over. But check this out. In order in Christ, we do the same thing over to stay connected. Y'all y'all in here. To have a sound connection, to stay in the place. Check this out. Because this is not a fad. This is a lifestyle. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. This is not a fad. See, I'm wearing J's right now, but after a while, I'm kind of getting to the place where I don't care about spending my money on J's. So the fad, the fad has wore off. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Oh, look. Hush, hush. <laughs> I, I, I say kind of. <laughs> I'm using it as an example. But in a relationship, it can't wear off like that. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Especially not a relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. So, oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, uh, I always saw power surge as a re uh, 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 a power, you know, a resurge of power on Wednesday, a resurge of power because a lot of us we lose all the power we gain on Sunday by the time we get here on on Wednesday, and so we need a power surge. We need another joke. I was talking to the pastor one time, and I said, man, y'all don't have church? Y'all have church a lot, man. He said, yeah, man, my people need a lot of church. <laughs> Maybe when he was saying that, did he realize that most of the people were apathetic? Wow. Are you apathetic? Do you put other things before God? I can't hear nobody. Is your job more important than finding, who, finding out the purpose of God for your life? Is, uh, God, is your monies or relationships more important 
than finding out the reason why you're on this earth and what you are to carry out for God. Come on, you got your mic. <laughs> I had it from the beginning. <laughs> no, Bishop, I wanted to say um, I've got the Christian, Christian Standard Bible, mm -hmm. and it says he did things right in the sight of, of the Lord, but it wasn't with a whole heart or wholeheartedly. Yes, ma'am. So when you look at it like that, I mean, yes, the pure heart, but you know, but when you look at it like wholeheartedly, now when it comes to Charlene, I'm going to do what's wholeheartedly, you know, because it's me. But are we really, when we come to ministry, when we come to church, our work or whatever door God has opened for us, are we wholeheartedly serving God and serving people? When you look at it like that, because you can look at a pure heart in a whole different aspect. No. But when it says wholeheartedly, we're all going to do wholeheartedly when it comes to us. Mm -hmm. But when we come right. to church, are oh. we really right. wholeheartedly to serve God in the position that God has placed you? Not We, we didn't place ourselves. Mm -hmm. God placed us in positions, and he has put something in you. And are you wholeheartedly serving God with that gift? Amen. You said something. You said something when you said that we're going to do go. We going all out for us. We. I, I don't care what we doing. We is if it has anything to do with us. We going all out. We going all out. We no holds barred. There's nothing that's too much. Y'all didn't hear what I said. For ourselves. For ourselves. We're going to all. But check this out. But God is the giver of the possession. But we'll go all out for ourselves. But when it comes to God, we shortchange him. Y'all didn't hear what I said. We shortchange him. We, 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 we walk real slow. Uh, oh, anything that God is going to do, he's going to go on and do it. There was a baby. There was a baby that used to attend here, and she came from what we believe, uh, many of us, if I told you the name of it, is a cult. And, uh, and you know, we are praising church. We are worshiping church. You know, we, we kind of radical, you know, radical with our praise and radical with our worship and radical with everything we do. And so, the baby would just sit there in church, or she would just stand, and she would just she look around. just look around the whole time. And I said, kept saying to myself, "Now nah, I know Jesus in this piece. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know Jesus in this piece. You know, you couldn't be here in here Sunday and not feel Jesus in this place. Yeah, no way you could have been here and 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 and, and you didn't feel something. Well." I finally went to the baby. No, no. Finally, she came to us, and she told us she was leaving. And she said, uh, y'all be asking people to praise and worship God when it, it just come. <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? She said, you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. But it was because of where she came from. And what they taught. You don't have to praise God like that. You just, you just do that. And she kept saying it, but she couldn't explain that. And I realized that there was some apathy there that you don't think that you have to put in some work. You don't think you have to go. The, the Bible says go the extra mile. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Huh? See, I, let me give you the background on going the extra mile is basically this, that there was in, in the Roman culture, in Roman culture, there was a law that the, any Roman that was traveling, if he saw a Jewish person, he could make them carry their stuff for a mile. Jesus said, don't just carry the mile, carry the extra mile. That's where that comes from. Are you following what I'm saying? So if Jesus... If Jesus said go the extra mile, why are we shortchanging him? Because God is never going to shortchange us. Anybody see 
apathy in your life. They ain't going to tell. They ain't, yeah. See? Yeah, go ahead. Bishop, I, it's crazy because I remember a dream that I had. It was last year, probably the first part of the year. Then I was asking God, what's wrong? Because you see people, you know, one minute they swoop, they through the roof. And then the next minute, it's like you got to drag them and you got to pull them and you got to lift them up and you got to, you know, do all of these things. And it was almost like God showed me, it was like people that were walking like zombies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were walking zombies and they were just dragging in and, you know, you know what I'm saying? You just see them just dragging in. There was no excitement. There was no enthusiasm about it. There was no, oh, God, I got to get to the house of God. I know we could, you know, God going to meet us. There was none of that. It was like, hey. I say, how you doing? I'm good. Well, one clue, one clue is that this right here. The people of God's victory is short-lived because they don't have a relationship. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. The people of God's victory is short-lived because they don't have relationship. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. The people of God's victory is short-lived because they don't have relationship. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. The only way that you're going to have victory every single day is that you have relationship. No matter what comes up, what goes, you can come through your challenges. Why? Because you have relationship. I know that, who my daddy is. Yeah, I know who my daddy is. <laughs> I know who got on that cross and saved me. And I know who, who, who indwells in me now. So why, why, why do elders, elder elects, pastors, bishops, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Archbishops, come here. Mother of the whatever board. Don't have relationship. Overseer ain't got no relationship. And that's why our victory is short-lived because of the lack of relationship. I'm doing it, but my heart ain't in it. I'm doing it, but my heart is far from it. I'm doing it, but where is your heart? Look, oh, I see why folk need revival now. Because people keep dying spiritually. People keep dying spiritually for the lack of relationship. This is not no a la peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a puff of smoke. You're going to have to put some work in. You're going to have to put some work in. And because, check this out, maybe some are just lazy. I had a conversation with a, with a fellow the other day. And I, they were asking me a question. I said, well, no, you ain't in, you ain't in trouble. But what I, what I, what I do want to do is I, ha I do want to give you some more responsibilities. Oh, no, just let me do what I'm working on, what I got right now. That's what they said to me. Apathetic. Don't want to be challenged to go to another level. Don't want to be pushed to the place where, the, where God wants to get the very best out of you. You give him your very best to everything else. Why can't you give your very best to God? Wow. Get the mic. That's Talk. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. The yellow mic. Turn the yellow mic on. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. And those things are temporary. They're only for a short-lived time. But we put so much stock 
is what we're doing, what we're trying to acquire, what we're trying to build up and heap on ourselves, because we just, we forget about God. We tell ourselves he is an invisible God. Yeah. And he's not. He's not. He's not. He's visible to you if you want him, if you want to see him. Come on. Yeah. So you just got to get in that word. Amen. Let me say, I'm going to read this again. Second Chronicles on, from a different translation. Mm -hmm. This, and I don't normally read the Message Bible, but because it's a, a synopsis, synopsis more so than a translation. Mm -hmm. For everybody that didn't know that, it's a synopsis. Okay? So, uh, uh, the Message Bible, it says, he, it says, he, talking about uh, King Amaziah, he lived well before God, doing the right thing for the most part. But he wasn't wholeheartedly devoted to God. <laughs> That's 2 Chronicles 25 and 2. It says he lived, talking about uh, King Amaziah, he lived well before God, doing the right thing for the most part, but he wasn't wholeheartedly devoted to God. As you know, we are talking about spiritual apathy. I want to give you some general quotes. And this is anonymous. Apathy is the glove in which evil slips in or slips his hand. Apathy is the glove in which evil slips his hand. Think about it now. In other words, you, become, you have become apathetic, not concerned with the things of God. It makes you, makes you easy to be susceptible to sin. Not being holy. Easy, susceptible. Can we say that again? So apathy makes it easy for us to become su susceptible mm -hmm. to sin. Right. Easy to sin. Right. Because nothing moved you. The spirit of God, the word of God. You remember when you first got saved and all you wanted to do was say, be saved and you wanted to tell everybody about how Jesus saved you and it was your only testimony for a long time. Child, I'm saved now. I ain't even going to let you bother me because I got Jesus on my side. And this right, you know how y'all did. You know how y'all did. But after a while, after a while, after a while, it required more than just being saved. Y'all didn't hear what I said. This is, see, this is why you look at, this is why you look at our motto. <laughs> it says, leading people, the world, to the cross while teaching believers to live beyond the cross. The Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. Most, most people just get saved. They just get saved. They don't realize that when you get saved, you got to pick that cross up. In other words, you got to carry some burden. In other words, you got to carry some challenges. Mind again, you got to come through some things. That's what causes you to be stronger to carry the cross. Must Jesus bear this cross alone? And all the world go free. <laughs> so, so the next one is Eli. Eli Weasel. Or Ellie Weasel. The opposite of love, check this out, is not hate. It's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness. It's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy. It's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death. It's indifference. A lot of us are just what he said, indifferent, because it don't affect me. It don't bother me. It ain't my child. It ain't my husband. Come here, somebody. It ain't my church. Come here. It ain't my car. Come here. It ain't my, it ain't my money. It ain't my, it ain't my, it ain't my. And none, none, that means that we're not moved by God or any and everybody, everyone 
that cons is yeah, that concerns God. The next one is by Martin Nee Moeller. That's N I E M O L L E R. First they came for the for first they came for the communists. And I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists. And I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out. Why? Because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. A lot to think about, ain't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is by G. G. This is the letter G. Bowles. B O W E S. One apathetic Christian may do untold harm untold. to a whole church. Yes. 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 Untold harm. One apathetic Christian may do untold harm to a whole church. Pour a quantity, quantity, quantity of cool water into a pot that has boiling water, and immediately the temperature change of the whole will sink. Pour, the, pour a quantity of cool water. Lord have mercy. It didn't even say the amount of cold water compared to the hot water. It just said just the amount, a amount of cold water poured into a, bowl, a pot of hot water. And the whole temperature of the pot will change. Lord have mercy. Okay? Just so the, just so the contact of men who are indifferent. In other words, it's saying the, a, a person that's apathetic alone uh, in the same building or same area, same group of people that's on fire. One apathetic person can put the fire out of many people. Just so the contact of men who are, ap who are apathetic, lukewarm, indifferent. I'm not bothering it. Why? Because it don't affect me. That ain't got nothing to do with me. But somebody got to have a voice. You ought to be pricked to say something. You ought to be pricked to do something. Check this out. Oh, God. Check this out. If you've been apathetic all your life and you're raising children, you're teaching them to be apathetic instead of difference makers. Huh? Instead of difference makers. And check this out. The reason why Uzziah was so bad, because his daddy, his daddy was so bad. See, y'all, uh, y'all ain't reading your Bible. This is this is Uzziah. This is Uzziah daddy. And they couldn't even see the Lord. Couldn't even see the Lord till Uzziah was dead. The little that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Y'all, y'all not. That's what the Bible said. This is Daddy. This is our Daddy. Okay, okay, all right. So just so the, just so the, just so the contact of men who are indifferent with those who are fervent deadens their fervor. Did y'all hear what it said? It deadens their fervor and tends to reduce them to the same apathy. So, so basically what you're saying, Bishop, is I can be on fire for the Lord. I could have made up my mind that it's going to be me and Jesus. 
Child, you going to a revival? I could have. Yeah, I'm going. That was, yeah. <laughs> you ain't get it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> yeah. You, you going to a revival? No, where you going? Child, I got something else to do. <laughs> well, where you going at? <laughs> well, maybe I won't go to revival today. Maybe I'll go with you. Did you hear what the pastor said? He need a thousand Child, they, look, we got, some, we got something going on at the church today, but no, I ain't going today. I'm going to go, we're going we gonna to go hang out and turn up. Yeah, you're going to the Bible study. Drink us a few drinks. You're going to power surge tonight. Drink us a few drinks. You're going to power surge tonight? No. You excited child, about it. Child, we go to power surge. Yeah, child, we go to power surge. We be there. Bishop just be talking. And. No, I, I can miss a night. Apathetic. I can miss a night. Apathetic. Apathetic. I'll anytime, be good. Anytime. One night become two. Two nights become three. Forget not to assemble yourself together as the manner of some is. In other words, that means come to church. Because every time you miss church, you miss an opportunity to grow. So, so can my I now finish my, my statement? Say that. I, oh, I'm sorry, baby. It was role playing. That was good, but I gotta, okay. I gotta make okay. a statement because this is what, um, this is what uh, I said I needed to come back to because you talked about apathy um, makes us susceptible to sin, and then once we become susceptible to sin, then comes the excuses as to why it's easy to sin. You talking, Pastor? Oh, I y'all take that up with the Holy Ghost because He told me to say that. But what I want to also say is, we gotta be careful who we hang around. Correct. Based on what you just read. Right. Because if I'm excited and on fire for God, but then I hang around people who don't feel like it's even, you know, girl, it don't even take all that. Did, you're doing too much, exact. You done heard it, right, baby? You're doing too much. You know, you know when I was on fire for God and I was going to revivals, I would still go to work. I was tired because I had to be in revival, but I was—I mean, all week. But I was going to work, drinking that coffee, and they tell me, "Oh, y'all had revival again tonight?" Yes. <laughs> and then they start calling me Holy Roller. Okay, whatever you want to call me, I'm going to revival. In the world right now. Is lulling the church to sleep because the church want to be accepted by the world, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. The, oh Lord, have mercy! We're supposed to be so excited and so on fire, and the fervor and the fire is supposed to draw other people to Christ, but it's going the other way around. The world is pulling us out of the church. No, they ain't pulling us out. They just love us to sleep in the church. That I'm making honest. everything, making that. Because see, our mind is that we're supposed to be in church. That's what our mind is. But we're not, but, but check it out. But our heart is far from it. Because we love bad. <laughs> and we, because we could be in church, but not in church. Right. Just like he said, just like the Bible says, all Israel is not Israel. So we have a lot of us hanging around church, but church is not in us. We got a lot of us hanging around Christ, <laughs> hanging on Christ. But how can you hang around Christ and not be impacted? That's what I want to know. That's it. <laughs> Come on, daughter. Oh, Jesus. 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 If you, you can't be lazy because the world is going to, it's going to reveal itself in you. When right. life happens, it's going to reveal itself in you. Right. Whether you are wholeheartedly doing this or you just doing this for a show you just hang for somebody around. to see it. And then you say you have to watch who you are hanging around. You going to know, you going to be able to tell your friends that are just empathetic. When you start going through something. Right. Or they start going through something, then they're going to start pulling on you. So you have to be careful that you don't allow them to pull you out of your blessed place 
to go where they are because you need something from God. You, you are desperate for something from yeah. God. So you can't allow this person that's not desperate, that's not seeking God, to allow you to be lazy Amen. in the things of God. Amen. 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 So we talked about all of that. Where does apathy start? Another of the, of the little foxes that can spoil the vine is spiritual apathy. Remember now, you're just going through the motions. Nothing moves you. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all susceptible to this creeping little monster. <laughs> and if it's not an if, it moves into our lives, it can be quite destructive. destructive. In fact, if spiritual apathy ever gains a foothold, Lord, it can me. spawn multiple yes. other terrible conditions that greatly hinder the vineyard, not only of your soul, our families, and our church. Spiritual apathy allows our spiritual battles to almost eat us alive. Spiritual apathy allows our spiritual battles to almost eat us alive. In other words, oh God, when we are apathetic and something happens or goes on that God is trying to use to grow you, to move you out of a, of a stuck place or dead place. Come here, somebody. It will almost eat you alive because you have, you have more apathy than you have feeling. Come on. It almost it eats us alive because... We're we're so consumed. Okay, so 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 spiritual apathy. No, no, no. You said the spiritual battles. Uh, spiritual apathy allows our spiritual battles to almost eat us alive. That means when things happen in our lives, because we're so apathetic, it don't move us. It won't. It, it's designed so to move then, us. So therefore, but it we move are us. consumed. We are gnawed at. You know how you gnaw at something? We are gnawed no. at. Our minds are at a, a place of unrest, and it's a constant gnawing and a constant eating that we cannot get up from that place. And listen, it's because you're apathetic to the things of God. What if God said, okay, I'm, I'm here. But, but you know, when, when everything was good, everything was hunky-dory, everything was everything, you know, you was out there living your best life, and I was nowhere to be found. Mm. Guess who else? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Lord Jesus. Guess who else, guess who else was apathetic in the body? Oh. My man, Isaac. Genesis chapter 26. Remember I preached the message, keep digging. Before he, got, before he got the will to keep digging, there was a place that he actually lived in oh. called Gerar. Yeah. And it's a place of knowing. Oh. Knowing at your dreams. Oh. Knowing, and so check this out. If you got, you have oh. dreams, you have dreams and aspirations to do some things, some things for God, or do something, some things in your life. But you're in a place. Apathy called, is a place of garage where it's knowing, it's knowing, it's knowing. And so now you can see if it's knowing, 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 knowing at your, at your life, at your dreams, at your uh, aspirations, it's knowing that. Now you can see what it means by you being eaten alive. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus, help us, God. You're in a place of Gerar. Go back and look at it. And look at, look at the word Gerar. Look at the place of Gerar where his dream, it was a place where his dreams were being tried. His aspiration was being tried. 
But if you're already apathetic, now you're being eaten alive. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? All right, just see. Just see, see. He's seeking out those apathetic folks. And this is something we're missing in the spirit. This is something we're overlooking in the spirit because everybody feels like they're so blessed. And everybody want to be so deep. Yeah. Feel like we're so deep. I mean, we're so blessed. Everybody feel like they're so deep. And the, and the thing about it is that we're missing it. Y'all better get sick of prophecy. <laughs> we missing better, it. Y'all better get sick of wanting, we missing wanting it. and needing the prophecy every Sunday. Go back and look at that do our word study. Look up the word garar. Garar. I, 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 you know, I preach that. I minister, I mean, I've ministered from Genesis many times on, on, on my boy Isaac. I never saw him as being apathetic. To the day. I said, what? I said, God used him as a vehicle, but he never really accomplished much because he was stuck on what his daddy left him. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. He didn't accomplish much. He, he only, he, he only, oh, God. You know, I thought Isaac was a man. He ain't a man. <laughs> I'm just saying. So anyway, but he, 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 he was just chasing what his daddy left him. Go back and look at it. He was chasing with his daddy. It wasn't nothing that Isaac did that was so great other than the, the fact that he sold in the same year and reaped the harvest in the same year, but he never did anything great. <laughs> ain't no need to be in a dreamer if you ain't going to go after the dreamers. <laughs> ain't, ain't no need to be in a dreamer. Unless you're going after the dreams. Ain't no need to even be dreaming big if you ain't going to go after the dreams. Ain't no need to even have an imagination if you ain't going to chase them. Come on, somebody. And you can't be apathetic having them. That's what I mean. That's what we're talking about, baby. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm going to read this, read the rest of this, and then you take take the take next. Take, who that? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry for you. I just got to add this, Bishop, because... Going back to the church as a whole, you know, when you really look at, quote, the body of Christ and the church as a whole, you know, you go to the Word of God, the Bible says that, you know, like look at the ten virgins. Half was, didn't have their light. That's what Half I listen. the people in church That's are what I listen. saved. They come for the emotional high. You know, I'll just give an example. Sunday for work. Sunday, the little glory cloud was in this house. Yeah. And if you can walk out the door and five minutes later you're arguing, or, you're not even saved. I mean, you can confess, but true salvation comes from the heart. Right. And you can come to the altar a hundred times, and if you do not repent from your heart and turn away from your sin, that's apathy. You have a church that's half full of apathy people apathy. because they're not even really saved, saved yet. Then they're the, just in church. Right. They come in because they know it's right. They know it's right to do. Lord have mercy. Okay. Our life seems, let me go. Okay. Let me look. Okay. Spiritual apathy allows our spiritual battle to almost eat us alive. Mm -hmm. It opens up to great feelings of being overwhelmed. Come on. Spiritual apathy opens up great feelings of being what? Overwhelmed. Don't get tired. We always tired. Yeah. Being overwhelmed and frustrated. Because many of us want to sit on our do nothing. <laughs> sit on our do nothing and do nothing. Are you with me? It opens up to great feelings of being overwhelmed and frustrated. Spiritual apathy causes us to coast and lean more on natural abilities 
instead of leaning on the provision of God. Girl, I got to work some more hours. That, that used to be me. Not no more, though, because I'm good. I need my rest more than I need these hours in order for me to not grow, go into spiritual apathy. We got to have a balance. Across the world. Across the board. And if we're doing more working, and, and, and listen, I, and this is, I hear this a lot. Ooh, Pastor, I just, I, you know, I need another job because, you know, this one job just ain't working. It just ain't doing it for me. And I understand. I get it. You got to do what you got to do to survive and live. I get it. However, are you asking God to be your provision or are you looking for these jobs to provide? Because, listen, God don't lie. And he, all he requires, oh, Lord, is that, that 10%. And I'm telling y'all, if you're faithful over that 10%, he said he'll, he'll make you ruler over much more. And, and Which means I ain't got to work like a slave. And really, to be honest with you, when you look at Malachi chapter, chapter 10, their problem was they was apathetic. They, they was apathetic. They were apathetic. The things of God just was not important to them. Wow. They was apathetic. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Bible, mm -hmm. apathetic. Mm -hmm. Come on, sweet pie. Yep. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> okay. So what time is it? We got, okay, 10 minutes. Spiritual apathy often starts in subtle Somebody say subtle. subtle. Subtle manners. Subtle means it catches us unaware. Subtle means it co it, it coasts it through. It, it just slides. Love. It slides. Love. Mm -hmm. Love. In subtle manners. Love. You to sleep. Mm -hmm. We are converted, and it seems like we can't get enough of the word. This is when this is when real conversion comes. It says. When we are converted, it seems like we just can't get enough of the word, can't get enough of positive fellowship, can't get enough of corporate worship. Our life seems to revolve around God, God's house, the things of God. It's all important. Y'all got to get this. Our priorities are set not by what I want, desire, and need. But our priorities are set according to spiritual events so that growth can take place in our lives. Let me say that again. Our priorities are set not according to what I want, need, or desire, but it's set according to the spiritual things that are happening that will cause me to grow. Just being involved with the things of God creates a faithfulness, strength, passion that then open doors to a great walk and relationship with God. We feel the joy of spiritual growth. Anybody excited when they see themselves growing or are you not growing? So you can't get excited. We feel the joy of spiritual growth and can sense that the sky is the limit with what God wants to do in my life. Check this out. A apathetic, a spiritual apathetic Christian of person only sees what God did and not what he's doing. I'm going to say that for the people in the back. A spiritual apathetic person can only see what God did. In other words, that's their only testimony. They never have a testimony about what God is doing right now. I'm trying. I say, man, you got to come on up. You got to come on. I'm trying. Been trying for four years. You apathetic. Yeah, yeah it's certain, and, and, and it's, it's just like the trying done got you to a place where you're tired. Yeah. 
you're overwhelmed. You're, you're like tired. Like, when is it going to ever happen? When is it going to ever change? When is it going? When is God going to ever do it for me? When is God going to ever come through? Apathetic. The Bible says that we have to find ourselves content in whatever state we're in. If I ain't, look, if I ain't got it right now, contentment got to be my lot. If I don't have enough right now, I got to be content and find a way to make it work. Not complain about it not being enough all the time. Let me do contentment like this. Oh, Lord, Bishop. Contentment means work with what you got. Work with what's in your hand. Work with what power you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all yeah, with me? Work with what you have. Many times we be trying to work with what we don't have or uh, trying to get and don't even know how to use what we have. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. See, God, oh, God, I heard the Holy Ghost. He want us to master. He want us to master some things as to where we are now. I'm looking, check this out. Uh, we in church look for another word when we ain't worked out, walked out, or practiced or applied the word we had last week. God doesn't just uh, judge us based on what we don't know. He judges us based on what we do know and don't do. Are you hearing what I'm playing? He ain't going to, if you don't know nothing about Jehoshaphat, <laughs> and I'm just using it as a, an example, you get before the judge of the seed of Christ, and we don't know nothing about Jehoshaphat, he ain't going to charge us with that. But if we get there, and we get there, and we, we know that Jesus loved everybody, and required us to love everybody, that's what we're going to be judged on. Because you didn't do what you knew to do. You didn't walk in or apply what you knew to walk in and apply. You became apathetic. You, you shoved it off. Oh, he ain't talking to me. Oh, I'm exempt from that. This is not the oh. IRS. This is the J-E-S-U-S. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Huh? This is not the IRS. You can't get no exemptions. Ain't no exemptions. Ain't no exemptions. He said that every man will be without excuse. See, we can get some exemptions from the IRS. There ain't going to be no exemptions when it comes to J-E-S and U-S. Mm, I just wrapped that one up. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I'm a rapper now. Okay, <laughs> I'm a rapper. <laughs> hey, man, lighten What's up. Your rapper day? What's, What's your rapper name? What's, What's your rapper name? What's your rapper name? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking for that. <laughs> I couldn't even think of one. Amen. But are we, and you got to check this out. What's, check this out. You got to get to a place where there's nothing, nothing or nobody that's more important than Christ in your life. The value on yeah, the value. He said, think on those things which are what? Above. Let his mind be in, be in you that was also where? In Christ. He said, for us to renew our minds daily. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. That's a good way to uh, not close out this series, but tonight, renew your mind concerning the things of God and how you think about it. Right? Go home and think about where I have fallen, how I got here. And listen, there, there's ways to get out if you want. God would never allow us. He would never take us to this lesson 
if it wasn't in the house mm -hmm. first. But he'll never take us here and drop us off and don't give us a way out. So find, listen, do a, do a check, do a self-check. This is your check, this is your checkup daily. Find out where you are in your walk with Christ. Find out if, you're, if this is really what you want. Mm -hmm. Because what we want, we go after. Oh, Lord. Y'all, y'all. I said what we want, we go, y'all know. We, we ain't even got to make it plain. We ain't got to draw it all out. It's already plain. Because we go after right. what we want, even if it don't want us. Y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we go after it harder when, when, when it don't want us. We go after that thing harder. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking. I am in pursuit of him with everything I got. This man, no man, my, not my mama, nobody was able to get me out of where I was but him. You understand what I'm saying? When I was suicidal and about to lose my mind, could nobody come to my rescue but him. And you think I'm going to give somebody else what he deserved? Y'all done lost it. Are you apathetic? Are you apathetic? Are you, check this out, check this out. Are you selling it? Are you selling, selling for something lower than what God has provided? That's in every part of your life. Are you selling? Are you selling? In your relationships, are you settling in what God is wanting to, pr to provide for you? Are you settling? Have you been apathetic? Has apathy entered into your heart? Is paying bills more important? You got to have balance. Got to have balance. You got to know how to work what you have. Work what you have. Be content in that state. And God going to bring you up. He going to open doors. He going to provide. He going to do those things. He going to do those things. His word. Listen, the Bible says that he watched over his word to perform it. See, check this out. He ain't got nothing to watch over with a month, with a minute, y'all, because y'all won't give his word back to him. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Y'all didn't hear it. Yeah. Huh? This is the relationship that we should have with God, is that I read his word, I see his promises that he made me, and when I look like his promises not happening like they're supposed to be, I... I have to speak his word back to him. Yeah. Now you said, yeah. see it right here? This one? Huh? You said that if I do this, this is what you're going to do. You said that you will supply all my needs. Now check this out. Tell me, any one of y'all, that your need ain't supplied right now. Y'all, <laughs> ah, see, see, yeah, your needs have already been supplied. So everything I get now is a nothing but extra, extra, nothing but blessing, blessing, nothing but over and beyond, overflowing, running over. Are you following what I'm saying? So, but the reason why. God ain't, you ain't hearing, maybe you ain't hearing nothing from, hearing anything from God because you ain't gave him nothing, you ain't, you ain't talked to him. You ain't talked to him, you ain't told him nothing. 
You, you ain't told him nothing because you ain't got none of him in you. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. You cannot require a re withdrawal without first making a deposit. You're trying to rob the bank. You finna go to prison. Y'all got it? Did y'all get it? Yeah, you going there talking about I'll make a withdrawal? I saw, matter of fact, matter of fact, I saw the holiday fall. I watched the holiday fall last night. And the guy told him, uh, the villain told the guy, you got to rob a bank. <laughs> rob a bank because he wanted, he wanted 25000 and he wanted another 10000 on top of it. He had the twenty five. But because he took his money, he said, I want 10000 He said, well, man, where I'm getting $10,000, you're going you gonna to rob a bank. And so they went to rob the bank in another town. And the little girl, you know, had on a dress. She go in there and said, hey, I came to make a withdrawal. <laughs> the lady, though, she ain't never seen this woman before in her life. This is a Western. And she said, well, baby, you got to be a member of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be a member of this bank to... Uh, to have an account so you can make a withdrawal. Actually, she laughed in her face first. She laughed in her face first, and she said, I came to make, she said, well, again, I'm, I came to make a withdrawal. She said, well, baby, you got to have an account so you can be a member before, before you can make a withdrawal. All I'm trying to tell you all, all we're trying to get across to you all is that serving or living for God yes, is God. more than coming to church. Yes, yes, we have good church here. Right? But you got to go home and have some good church at home. God, just, he resides in here. He, we, we know he do. But he wants to reside with each one of us, not only in us, but in our abode. And many of us have gotten apathetic. We're not apathetic to church, but we're apathetic to God. We're apathetic to a relationship with God. We're apathetic to his word. We're apathetic to his spirit. Come on, we're apathetic. Check this out. You can't treat God like three people have treated you. You can't hold God accountable for what other folks have done. Them folk did that. Them people, that man, that woman, that co-worker, that boss, that supervisor. They did that. God didn't do that. The same energy who give everything else in your life is the same energy that God is requiring of us. I want to be blessed, but I don't want to go the extra mile. I want to be blessed, but I don't want to love nobody. I want to be blessed, but I don't want to uh, get up and go to work. I want to be blessed, but I don't want to be. I just want to sit on my do nothing. And do nothing. Spiritual apathy. Going through the motion. When we come together, we ought to feel something. I ain't heard nobody say nothing. When we come together, my anointing or join with your anointing, with her anointing, with his anointing, but somewhere the chain been broken. You know they still have the so called the weakest link. Is that you? Is that you? Because the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Is that you? Is that you? Remember uh, 
Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples, and he asked him, he told him that somebody's going to betray me. And they started saying, is it me, Lord? <laughs> is, is it me? Is it me? We ought to be asking, who, you ought to be asking, is it me? Lord, reveal to me where I'm apathetic in my life. Well, I'm apathetic about certain things. When I'm apathetic about things happen to uh, things happen to other believers. Where am I apathetic when it pertains to you and your people, God? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on and give the Lord a hand, praise. literally feel like crying. No more. Eliminate the excuses. He, it's from being, it's, I mean, my grandma, used, my granddaddy, one of them used to always say, you can lead a horse to a water, to the water but you can't make them drink it. And that's what sometimes it feels like pastors are doing. We're trying to lead you to Christ, but we can't make you take it. We can't force you to accept him. And then after you accept him, we can't force you to want to live right. But we keep coming. We keep trying because we love people. And we want to see your lives blessed. We want to see you, listen, there are so many of you, yes, God, that have petitions right now laying before the Lord. Things you want God to do for you. Some things you haven't told nobody that you're petitioning God for. But you are petitioning God with a heart that's not wholeheartedly connected to God. But you want him to do something for you. What kind of relationship is that? If I want something, I know it's going to require something of me. I wanted this man. I ain't lying. And I ain't, I ain't lying. I wanted him. I didn't want nobody else to have him. But it required something of me. And I built a relationship with God because I knew it was only God that can get his that could get him, get his life to turn around and get him to see marriage like I saw marriage. And to get him to love me like I knew I loved him. Right? Y'all know the story. And I ain't got to go into all of it. Well, my point of it is, it required something of me. And because I was desperate, I went all in. How desperate are you? Not just for what you need from God, but for God. Come on and give God a hand, praise. Cause sing it all day. Your heart ain't in it. It's just words in the air. In the commandments, the very first commandment. It says that you should have no other gods. That you should have no other gods before Yahweh. But many of us, many of us have other gods Amen. before Yahweh.
our children, our job, our dream, our desire for more, our idols. Our husbands and wives. Yes. Can become idols. We do more for our kids, more for our spouses, more for whoever than we give God. That's an idol. Look it up. Do a study. Get these idols cast down in your lives. Because when he say he'll not have, listen, you don't want him to take him. He said, I will not have no other God before me. Yeah. King, just real quick, King uh, Amaziah, I mean, Amaziah, Amaziah won a battle. And instead of him destroying all the gods that the people he went in battle against, he took those gods, statues, in ornament, um, you know what I'm saying, statues, and took them to his house or his kingdom or whatever the case may be. When he should have been destroying them, utterly destroying them. And I've never understand people that worship a figurine. It just made, made no sense to me. Yeah, that's what I mean, man-made. Yeah. But, amen. Come on, y'all, give the Lord a hand for you. This was very good. Very good. Back here next week for part two. We 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 making disciples. We're making disciples. We want to see your lives change, and we want to see you growing in the things of God. And sometimes it takes tough stuff like this. Not the prophecy, not the hype, not the shaka baba baba. But word studies and studies like this to get us to see us for real. Amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for Bishop. We thank God for, for him on tonight. Amen. We thank God for our YouTube and YouTube and Facebook viewers on tonight. We appreciate you. I know, you know, the study blessed your lives is evident. Amen. Thank you for always dropping by, tuning in with us on Wednesdays and Sundays. We love you. We're praying for you always. And on behalf of Bishop, myself, and the CWM family, go with God and God will go with you. We love you. See you here Sunday morning at 9. And for those of you in the house, go ahead and prepare your hearts for giving. We're going to go ahead and turn this. We have announcements. Just supersede. Supersede Sunday. Bring your $23.